Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Jim Ward, a PDM Technical Support Specialist. In today's video, I will be demonstrating how to recover a lost SA password in SQL. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So when would you need to use this method anyway? You would use this when your SQL instance only has the SA account enabled for login with sysadmin permission. When you create or install SQL, you need to also allow PDM server admins to sysadmin permissions in SQL. It's not granted automatically. But if you don't do that, then sometimes you only have the SA account is the only one that has sysadmin privileges and then the password can get lost and then you don't have any account anymore that allows you to log into SQL with sysadmin privileges and there's things that you need to do sometimes with PDM sometimes even just looking at the tables you need to be able to log in with enough permissions to do that if that password has been lost but now you actually need to go do something in there I mean you can go along just fine using PDM but if you don't need to get into the database to do something, then you may not even realize that there's an issue. But now something has come up and you need to get log into the database and perhaps uh, do a query to find out what, a, what the problem is, but you can't log in. Or more importantly, maybe you need to uh, update your PDM and you can't because you don't have the SA password. So that's when you need to go into this method. The first step in doing this is to identify the location of your database and back it up. If you're in this situation, it's probably because you haven't had to access your database in a while. You may not be absolutely certain where the SQL server is located. You can verify where it is located in the instance that it is running on in one of three places. You can find it in the PDM administration tool in the registry on a client with a vault view or on the archive server. Later on, I will be showing you where the information can be found in each of these locations. If only the server is listed, then it's using the default instance and that default instance is called MSSQL server. That will become important when we look at the services. And if the server is listed as the server name backslash and then another name, that other name is a named instance that is running on the SQL server. Since you cannot log into SQL, you cannot do a normal SQL backup. You can back up your SQL, though, by copying out the MDF and LDF files for both the Kinesio admin DB and also for your own database for your vault. You need to copy both of those out. So it's good to copy those out to a safe location before doing anything on the database. Now that we know the SQL name, we can go to the SQL server and stop the SQL service. And then we can start the service in single user mode using a command prompt. This will log in the current user with sysadmin permissions. Then we can, can create a recovery account. We add the recovery account to the sysadmin server role. We restart the SQL service in multi-user mode. Then we log into SQL using the recovery account. And then finally, we fix the SA account, reset its password. And then finally, we give the local server admins permissions in SQL as sysadmin. So that should this issue come up again, you don't have to go through the recovery of the SA password. We can just log in to the server, log into SQL, and fix the issue. All right, let's go through some demonstrations. All right, so again, the first step is to identify just where your database is located. Now, as long as you can log into your PDM admin tool, that's probably the simplest place. You could log into your vault and then right click your vault name and go to properties. And then it's listed right there as database server. Notice in my case, it is running on an instance. This first part here is the server name and the last part is the instance name. Again, if it's only listing the server name, then it's running on the default instance, which is called MSSQL server. Show you where in the registry it would be located. And we go into HKey Local Machine, Software, SolidWorks, P Applications, PDMWorks Enterprise, Databases, and then 
test recover. And again, this is only on clients that have a local view installed. Here we can go to DB server. You look across and you see it is listing the same information, the server name and instance name. The last place that you can go, if you don't have access, if you can't log into PDM and you don't have a client with a vault view installed, you can go to the archive server. In my case, the archive server is on a test machine, which is where the client is located. We're here on the archive server. You now scroll down to SOLIDWORKS PDM then choose archive server configuration. When you do that, you can go to the folder archives. And then look here on your vault name and you see the database server is listed right here. You may have to expand the column, but again, you'll see the database server name is here and the database name is listed there. Great, so now we know where to look and the instance name for your database. Now that we know that the location of the database and the database server that it sits on, we can go there and copy the MDF and LDF files. So we know this is on the server named PDM-test and it's running on the instance SWPDM. Let's go there. We will need to stop the services first. Click here to search, type services, and here's services. Now if you type the first letter, it will take us to that location. We look down here, we see here's SQL Server SWPDM, the instance service. We will stop that service so that we can copy out the MDF and LDF files. If we don't stop the service, then it, we're not allowed to copy it because they're in use. Now let's go find those. And you, the, you will find them on C, Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server. Now notice we I have different instances here. I have two with SWPDM because I upgraded. It was at, this is 2014, I upgraded it to 2019, and so it's listed in both locations. However, when I look at it and go into MSSQL, I'm looking for this data folder, and that data folder only exists in this location. So I look in here and I see here's the Kinesio Master DB, MDF, and LDF files. And then down here are my vault name, the MDF and LDF files down here as well. So let me select those. I hold down the control key. This is just a simple Windows copy paste. Now that I've got those, right click and copy them, then go to another location and do a paste. And then that didn't take long in my case because there's not much there. And that's it. Now they are, they are backed up. And should something happen to the originals, you do have backups of your database. All right, we have backed up the databases by copying out the MDF and LDF files. Our next step is to start a command prompt as an admin. You can type CMD down here and then run as administrator. Now we have already stopped the service, so we're just going to start it now. And if you are using a default instance, then you would just type MSSQL server here. In our case, we are not using the default instance, we're using a named instance. So we have to type MSSQL dollar sign in the name of our instance. And then we need to tell SQL that we're going to be using SQL command to talk with it. Select enter. That starts it in single user mode. We need to connect to it using the SQL command. SQL command to connect to a named instance is you type in an S, capital S, and then the server name and a backslash and the instance name. If you're using the default instance, you can just type SQL command and enter. And now you get a numbered prompt. So we're going to start by creating the login. So the login I'm going to use is called recovery account. I do have to specify a password equals and then single quotes. So I'll type go. And now I can go ahead and add this user to the role of sysadmin. And again, type go so that it actually does it. And now we just need to exit. And we do that by typing exit and enter. It gets us out of SQL command. And now we need to stop our instance and then restart it. And 
and we stopped it and restarted it and it is no longer in single user mode. We will finish the rest of this now in SQL Management Studio. We'll, we will close our command prompt. All right, so I we'll started SQL Management Studio and we will log in using the SQL Server authentication. The login name will be the name that we entered before. And apparently I entered recover account and the password and then connect. Now that I'm in here, I, I'm logged in with SA permissions so I can go into security, logins, and go down to the SA account and now reset the password for the SA. And while you're in here, you normally want to uncheck enforce password policy because if you have some computer that's trying to log in but has the wrong password, you can wind up locking the SA account. And so you have to come over here and unlock it over here on status, enable, re-enable the account. So if you don't want the SA account to become locked, it would therefore prevent anybody from using PDM, you need to uncheck that enforce password policy. Once you've done that, just tell it OK. In my case, I'm my SA password is fine. And so I'm going to leave it alone and tell it OK. And then once you do that, then make sure that you come over here to logins, new login, and add the logins for Windows authentication for all of the admins for your server, certainly for your current login. Make sure then that you come over to uh, server roles and give them sysadmin privileges as well. Then that way in the future, if you lose the SA password, you won't have to go through this recovery process. You can just come log in and reset the SA password. That concludes the video on recovering a lost SA password. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. This has been Jim Ward from Go Engineer. Have a great day.